स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया the questions that we have to answer to define to describe this oscillatory motion is what is the minimum energy to start the oscillation the second question that we have to answer is <coughs> or uh, uh, so the second question we have to answer is uh, well the well the first in fact the first question even before that is uh, whether the motion is going to start right so what is the condition for the start starting of the oscillatory motion and then the second question is what is the minimum energy that is required to start the motion of the oscillatory uh, nanotube and finally how can we describe the motion of these oscillatory nanotubes so i am going to describe this model first by standard newtonian mechanics and then later on i am going to describe the same model using our variational calculus and to come up at the same result that we began with ok so uh, so we are going to start our description of the model of the oscillatory nanotube so modeling <coughs> nano nanotube inside inside nanotube oscillator ok and the nanotube oscillator let me just draw two two nanotubes and i see that the inner nanotube is is the following right so this is at a distance d and this will be drawn outside and then also drawn inside so in this device what we have is a double walled we call this as a double walled uh, nanotube oscillator and it starts when we pull the inner nanotube by a certain distance let us say d right and then we are going to assume in this motion that this this pulling is not that much that the inner nanotube completely comes out of the outer nanotube or we are assuming that there are no edge effects of the outer nanotube with the inner nanotube otherwise if the entire inner nan nanotube gets pulled out we will see that uh, we, we, we expect that the motion is going to stop and the model is going to fail ok. So, in this device, so in this device, in this device a double walled carbon nanotube starts with its inner tube extruded by a distance by a distance d right out of fixed open ended outer carbon nanotube ok ok so which means that the moment we we pull out the inner nanotube we expect that uh, the van der waal interaction energy or the van der waal force that is generated due to this this pulling out effect is going to suck the inner nanotube back into the outer nanotube however due to inertia the motion will continue inside the outer nanotube and the 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 inner nanotube will go partially out from the other end and then due to inertia the motion is going to again repeat uh, repeat and we will get a cycle or the oscillatory cycle ok. So, so what I said is the following. So, my excess van der Waal my excess van der Waal force sucks the inner nanotube back the inner nanotube back right and I see that there is a reversal reversal of 
the direction at the opposite end, reversal of direction at the opposite end, right of, of the outer nanotube, outer nanotube because of the inertia itself which returns the oscillatory inner nanotubes back to its starting location, which, which returns the oscillatory inner tube, inner tube back to its starting starting uh, location. Okay. So, that is the motion that we are going to try to model. Okay. So, then as I said we have to answer three questions. Let me write down those questions. So, the first question that is to be answered is will, will the inner nanotube, the inner nanotube, will the inner nanotube be sucked inner nanotube be sucked into into outer nanotube okay and we call this as my acceptance criteria acceptance condition and the second question is how much energy is picked up how much energy is picked up picked up by the oscillating uh, nanotube, by the oscillating nanotube. And the third question that we want to answer is what is, how can we quantify this oscillatory motion or for example, what is the oscillatory time period or the oscillatory frequency of this motion. So, what will be the oscillatory oscillatory frequency of this motion okay so the assumption is the two nanotubes interact uh, so that the interact completely by the inner portion of the nested uh, inner nanotube okay so which means that the outer portion so again let's go back to the diagram the outer portion of the inner nanotube uh, does not contribute to the interaction of uh, interaction energy of the motion of these nanotubes. Okay. Okay, so, what I have is the assumption before I answer this question is assume the two tubes the two nanotubes only interact only interact along along the inner the inner portion only interact along the inner portion of the two of the nested of the nested inner inner tube right or uh, or or it is equivalent to saying that the extruded portion the extruded portion portion of the inner tube, the inner tube does not contribute, does not contribute. Okay. Okay. So, the extruded portion does not contribute, fine. So, so let us start answering all those questions. So, the first question is the acceptance criteria, will, uh, will the nanotube be sucked into the outer one? And the answer is yes, as along as long as the interaction energy is negative or attractive, right. So, uh, so consider the answer to this question is we need to consider the sign of the interaction energy. So, consider E C C. Notice that we have evaluated the interaction of these two nanotubes. Notice we call this cylinder cylinder interaction as E C C. We find that it is equal to the following expression. The E C C expression is uh, is is this one here, which is a boxed 
expression. So, we will be using these expressions uh, in the L format. So, as long as E C C is negative, we expect that the inner tube will be sucked into the outer tube. So, uh, so my E C C let me call this as the start value, this is 3 pi eta c whole square b 1 divided by 4 b 2 to the power 4 times minus a of L 5 plus 21 by 32 b by b 2 to the power 6 of L 11. Right? We see that if I have if E C C star is greater than 0, then the net interaction energy is repulsive and the inner nanotube will be pushed out of the outer nanotube. So, we would not have the oscillatory motion. Okay. So, the net interaction net interaction is repulsive and we see that the inner the inner tube will be pushed will be pushed out of the outer tube okay fine so that answer the acceptance criteria the second question is what is the suction energy right so the moment we we ascertain the sign of the interaction energy which needs to be negative the suction energy uh, is equal to the work done on the system initially right so my suction energy is so if i provided provided my interaction energy is the cylinder cylinder interaction energy is negative then my let me call this as se then my suction energy my suction energy is uh, is work done work done in extruding the cylinder out of the outer cylinder so so again my cylinder is as follows i see that uh, the inner cylinder has been extruded initially by a distance d. So, my suction energy will be equal to the work done which is also equal to negative E C C star times d. Note that I have put a minus sign so that I can get a positive work done. Okay. So, this is the work done work done in extruding out the inner cylinder extruding out out the inner cylinder inner cylinder by by a distance d okay okay so so that answers what is the suction energy which will drive the system the third and the most vital question is describing the mechanics of of the uh, of the uh, setup okay so then to answer the os, uh, to describe the oscillatory motion of the two nanotubes let us look at uh, these two tubes of a certain length which are in which in which the initial tube is extruded by a distance d so let uh, let us say that in general i have the outer tube let's say it is of length l2 and let me also show that the inner tube is at a distance well it is of length L 1 right, and they are all coaxial. So, that is the assumption and let us say that the center of L, L 1 uh, well let me call this distance as for convenience I am going to call this distance as 2 L 2 and this distance as 2 L 1. Okay. So, we see that for convenience uh, I have uh, the, the the center of all the axes is the origin right and the center of the inner cylinder is at a distance z comma 0 right so so the setup is as following so, to to look at the oscillatory dynamics oscillatory dynamics let us assume inner an outer inner slash outer nanotube of length length 
2 L 1, 2 L 2 right and we also assume the center, we assume that the center of the outer nanotube, the center of the outer nanotube uh, is at the origin is at 0 comma 0. So, the outer nanotube of length 2 L while the center of the inner nanotube inner nanotube is at at initial point z comma 0. So, it is slightly shifted. So, z is going to be our uh, our distance from the center through which we are going to describe the oscillatory motion right. So, we expect that at equilibrium z is 0 otherwise in the oscillatory motion z changes its uh, its value. Okay. So, then further uh, what we have is that the ends of uh, the ends. So, which means that the ends of, so these are all my assumptions. Also assume that the ends of my outer or inner, inner cylinder right. Notice that outer cylinder is of length 2 L. So, the ends of the outer cylinder or the inner or the outer nanotube is at length plus minus L 2 and my inner cylinder is of length z plus minus L 1 right. My outer cylinder is of length L 2 and my inner cylinder is of length z plus minus L 1 ok. And then in my oscillatory motion we will see that we have uh, 5 different cases where the center of the inner cylinder can remain with respect to the uh, origin. So, I am going to describe the motion in 5 different stages. So, or let me call this is in the form of 5 cases. So, my case 1 is my case 1 is when the center of the inner cylinder is extremely far apart or when my z is less than minus L 1 plus L 2. So, it is outside the outer cylinder right and outer cylinder so that there is no no edge effects as well. So, which means that the inner inner tube in this case is fully extruded inner tube is fully extruded fully extruded along along negative z axis inner tube is fully extruded along the negative z axis and then in case 2 I have that z varies from it can vary from minus L 1 plus L 2. So, it is certainly inside partially inside to, to minus L 2 minus L 1 right or let me call this as uh, L 1 minus L 2 right. So, this is indeed uh, in partially inside, but well L 2 is bigger than L 1. So, let me put it uh, write it like this. So, minus of L 2 minus L 1. So, z is partially inside the inner tube is partially inside the outer tube, but still in the positive uh, along the negative z axis along the negative uh, axial direction right. So, in this case we have the inner tube partially partially extruded along along negative z axis. The inner tube is partially extruded along the negative z axis. Then my third case is when it is completely inside the outer tube. So, suppose I have that z uh, is between L 1 minus L 2 to uh, L 2 minus L 1 right. So, so let me let me write it in the minus form. So, L 2 minus L 1 with a minus sign and then it is with a plus sign. So, here I have the inner tube is fully fully inside inside the outer tube right. So, these are my various positions of the center of the inner tube. Then I could also have uh, I could also have that the inner tube is partially contained inside the outer tube, but along the positive z axis. 
so which means that z is from uh, l2 minus l1 to l2 plus l1 and then this is where the inner tube is is part is partially inner tube is partially extruded inner tube is partially extruded in the positive z axis okay and then fifth case is i have that z is bigger than l2 plus l1 and this is the case where the inner tube is fully extruded out of the outer tube but in the positive z direction so inner tube fully extruded along positive z axis right and to describe the oscillatory motions these five cases are repeated twice right so this five cases are going to be repeated once for half the motion of the nanotube okay or half the time period of the nanotube okay so then uh, the next stage is to describe these uh, these stages of motion using the interaction energy so note that in case 1 and case 5 there is absolutely no interaction so we can assume that in 1 and 5 there is the interaction energy is 0 so assume before we do that note that these four case, these five cases involve four boundaries one boundary is this point the other boundary this point the third boundary this point and the fourth boundary this point so my cutoff points cutoff points or my boundary points are given by z is equal to plus minus l1 plus minus l2 so there are four cutoff points okay so that is the point we will note so then notice that we are going to assume that in case 5 and case 1 the interaction energy is zero because there is no interaction with our assumption so assume assume fully extruded state fully extruded extruded states 1 and 5 gives E C C equal to 0 right and for other states the work done increases by E C C star times the length or the distance that the, na the nanotube travels right for other states for other states for other states w increases w increases by e c c star times the interaction length times the interaction length ok ok we see that in this case w will be w will be in case so we have three more cases left so in case 2 in case 2 w will be uh, e c c star times l1 plus l2 plus z right and in my case in my case 4 in my case 4 so case 2 and case 4 are very similar one in the negative z axis the other in the positive i see that this is e c c star times l 1 plus l 2 minus z and finally in state 3 or case 3 where the tube is completely inside i see that the work done is e c c star times the length of the inner tube which is 2 l 1 times the length of the inner tube which is 2 l 1 and what I have is the following uh, well so what uh, E C C star now is negative by its definition because it is a suction uh, interaction energy uh, the, the attractive interaction energy so what I have I have written down is negative of the work done right so if I were to plot this negative w if I were to plot this w on uh, with respect to z I will see that I will see that we have the following five stages. So, this is my z axis. So, 
let me let me now uh, break down into following five stages. I have three, I have four, so I have three and four stage number three, stage number four and stage number uh, two and stage number one stage number 1 and uh, and stage number 5 okay so i have divided into five different stages so let me let me remove all these arrows because the diagram becomes a uh, little clearer so this is my uh, negative w axis okay and i see that i see that i get the following curve so this times this, this, this and this. Okay. So, this is my stage 3, these are my stage 2 and my stage 4 and my stage 1 and 5 are given by this. So, we can see that in stage 1 and 5 the work done is 0 and in stage 2 the work done is decreasing with z and in stage uh, well in stage 4 the work done is increasing with z right in stage 3 or in case 3 the work done is constant we can see that it is independent of z which is given by uh, ecc times 2l1 okay so the diagram here is important because we can see that there is zero acceleration of the particle or the nanotube at in for case 1 case 3 and case 5 the only acceleration is or slash deceleration is in case 2 and 4 right 